Hey, what's up guys? So I, uh, last video I did on my truck was kind of shoddy. It was in the dark in my garage and it was kind of a last minute deal so I didn't really plan it very well. But, um, so I've been promising this video, which I've been taking forever to make, um, but I figured the truck's clean today and I figured it's a nice day and the gardeners just got done trimming trees down the street. So there always seems to be a lawnmower going in this neighborhood for some reason every single day, all day. So anyway, now that it's quiet and without further ado, here is my truck. It is a 1966 Ford F100 step side. It was actually born like this. Um, color is actually original, believe it or not. It came from Ford like this. The truck was actually a Cal, uh, Caltrans truck. And for those of you who are not from California, it's the uh, state ran uh, highway maintenance uh, department, which is Cal Trans. So, um, but this was like a, I guess you could call it like a supervisor truck or, you know, maybe a cone truck or who knows. But um, I just know I bought it from the original private party owner who bought it from a Caltrans auction in like early 70s. And he used it um, for his family truck to actually uh, take his kids out of town and they went to the Grand Canyon and all kinds of stuff. I've got a couple pictures that I'll show you with his kids actually in their early teens in the bed of the truck um, cruising down the road. So it's really, really pretty cool. But um, I obviously went a different route. Uh, this truck was actually born with a, a six cylinder in it, inline six. I believe it was a 262, if I'm not mistaken. Had a, a C4 automatic transmission in it, which is kind of rare. Usually they're stick shift. Um, but that is obviously long gone. Um, I've been wanting to build this truck since I was in high school. And uh, I'll make this long story short, but uh, me and some buddies were out in Barstow. Uh, one weekend wheeling our trucks and um, all of a sudden here comes the hay hauler Robbie Gordon's truck Who I believe it changed hands and there were a couple screw up screw balls driving the thing and It came up on us and I was sold. I was just like, oh my god I, ha I gotta have that and uh, obviously that's a race truck. This is a pre-runner of sorts um, but yeah ever since then and and then I saw all these pictures in Dusty Times magazine which is a off-road racing kind of a magazine or a newspaper from back in the day um, I'm really dating myself here but uh but yeah so I, I had to have that truck or some sort of version of that truck and that's what this is so I uh, bought this about five years ago from that uh, private party owner he was a high school music teacher super uh, Super conservative guy. The truck didn't run. I actually had to uh, drag it out of his front yard up in um, Carpinteria, California. And um, it was, believe it or not, this color. So, um, so what I've done, I guess I'll start with the engine. I had a 535 inch 460 based big block built for it. Um, guy named Troy Bowen in uh, Anaheim, California, who's a Ford specialist, built this engine for me. And I, I gave Troy creative freedom. I just said, look, dude, I want 700 horsepower. Even though I don't need that much, I wanted it. And um, this is what he built me. So it's, um, again, it's a 535 inch stroker. It's a forged rotating assembly. It's obviously got trick flow heads. The part number is SAO4917. Um, they're actually just one step down from Pro Mod Heads. Um, pretty big stuff, super gnarly. This uh, engine doesn't need to rev. It makes gobs and gobs of torque, and uh, it's pretty phenomenal to drive. Um, it just idles around town. It, it doesn't even, 
it doesn't even try to just cruise so it's it's really uh, quite phenomenal it's the most horsepower I've ever had under my foot but um so yeah made 700 at the crank just a little like 702 and uh, 700 pound-feet of torque and uh, it's got a big old nine quart well pan on it which was uh, we had to actually notch it and and uh, because of the cross member but you can see right there that that little kick out or kick in rather did not come with this pan it's it's a, a Canton pan um, and let's see here it's got an E4OD transmission so it's a automatic um, it's electronic against my better judgment um, I wanted to keep this truck real simple and mission creep uh, got me involved with this guy um, this transmission is what you would find in an early Super Duty uh, mid to late 90s um, it's got a four, uh, 460 obviously a bell housing on it um, and they offered the 460 in those earlier Super Duties so that's what, how this came about um, it's got all all sorts of beefy internals and again it's electronically controlled so it's got a quick four um, US shift controller that uh, gets a signal from the throttle position sensor on the engine uh, the engine actually started out as carbureted and then uh, I just couldn't get it to work in the bumps so I ended up going with the Holly Sniper uh, X-Flow so uh, but it I'm still I'm still a little out on the, the transmission it just really it just kind of gets it's weird and uh, I'm, it, right now like I'm having a problem with the converter locking up and forth when it gets hot so I don't know it's just one of those things these hot rods just require so much constant attention um, so uh, but again back to the sniper injection it really uh, works well I'm, I'm not dogging it at all Holly makes a great product um, but excuse me I I do have my concerns about you know five more years down the line the ECU is actually inside of the throttle body and I've yet to uh, figure out a solution as a backup or some sort of I guess part that I could buy to to have with me in case it dies because if that thing dies I'm in trouble so um, yeah so it's got a uh, dual fuel pumps it's the Holly Dominator uh, twin twin motor pump got my uh, relays right here twin fans obviously I got each fan on its own relay um, just for redundancy I've got a uh, bench benchworks uh, power steering box it's actually uh, I believe it's nine to one ratio uh, which is actually exactly what the hay hauler has um, the benchworks guys actually built that box for that truck so um, what do you know I, I ended up with the same thing um, see here it's got a CVF serpentine system um, air conditioning air conditioning blows real cold it's got vintage air um, which I highly recommend their kits are pretty amazing and very very well thought out um, I've got my puke, puke tank here uh, a lot of gases come out of this thing when I'm sitting at a uh, stoplight some people think it's on fire but it's really not um, and it, this is where I I drain the condensation out of this thing here too. Um, of course, my main main uh, fuses there for the chassis. I've got two ignition coils for redundancy. Um, every every bit of plumbing on this truck is AN. So uh, I'm not sure how how many of you know, but those fittings, especially these dash tens, are incredibly expensive. That's like probably a forty dollar fitting right there each so um, yeah I'm, I'm just silly like that I just I just had to have it and I did it so I, I probably got a couple thousand dollars just in plumbing fittings in this truck um, every single bolt on this truck with the exception of just a, a handful here like this guy every single bolt on the truck is grade 8 these aren't because I just have been so lazy I just haven't swapped them out but um, I mean you could see my ground 
bolts are even grade eight. So it's, it's, I'm that guy, I guess you could say. But um, champion four, four core uh, radiator, still not enough. I, I still have issues with cooling at times when it's warm out. And as you can see, my, my clearance is really, really tight here. So I need to figure that out. Um, but like I said, these things need constant attention. Um, I built these headers. It's my first set of headers, so don't judge me. Um, but this is a kit from Stainless Works or Stainless Headers. Um, they ship you the flange with the stubs uh, pressed in, which is really handy. And then I bought engine ice blocks, um, a few kits of that to actually snap these headers together before you build them. And then you take each primary off as you go and just tack weld them together. Uh, it's a really phenomenal kit. They're a little on the pricey side, but I could not have done this without those those little they're like little Legos, but they're they're sorted in like 20 degrees 30 degrees 45 degrees and so on so they're really interesting uh, and a great invention um, at that so I didn't go stainless on these headers. These are actually mild steel. I believe that stainless is a little on the brittle side and this truck is going to be flexing and moving and I, I just didn't want the, the the brittle structure of those headers because they go through heat cycles and whatnot so I stuck with the mild steel saved a little bit of money but that really wasn't the point the point was I wanted something that I could you know have it bend instead of snap so that was my reasoning behind that um, the, the suspension system on this truck is actually from Autofab and they actually don't make this kit anymore. Um, it's called their wheel travel kit. And the Autofab's race truck, which is an eight open um, full size truck, and they actually run this kit on their uh, race truck. So they don't make it anymore because it's quite time consuming from what I understand. Um, but this kit works so good for what it is. I mean, it's this isn't a trophy truck, guys, so I'm not, I wasn't interested in building something modern. I wanted to do something that you would have found back in the day, like late 70s, early 80s, out at the races in their in a pre-runner. So I, I wasn't going for something modern. I mean, this this makes 19 inches of travel, and it's it's an honest 19. It's strapped, um, and it works really really well for what it is. Um, but I I really have only I've only taken it out once. I haven't done any shock tuning. Um, but the uh, from, from what I've experienced so far it works very very well so I can show you that these beams these are one ton beams um, and the difference is you can pick up an I-beam that's a half ton and it actually you can pick it up with one hand if you try to pick up one of these beams with one hand you're you're not gonna do it so that's that's the, the quickest way to tell if you ever look for these in a junkyard uh, but these are one ton they're kingpin uh, the you can see how the this bracket here actually moves this this pivot point out so basically instead of bending these guys or moving they basically just move the, the pivot points so it's a wider track so it's it's four over uh, from what it was stock and uh, and then they build these these uh, coil buckets here. They actually have a NASCAR adjustable uh, nut on them, and they're not really to raise ride height. So you can see the uh, the nut adjuster right there. It's actually for after the coils take a set. Um, so when they settle down after they're new, um, they sag a little bit. So you can actually uh, adjust the you know the truck side to side and, and make it even. Uh, that's really the primary um, idea of this. And then you can see my uh, hydraulic bump stops. These are two and a halfs. Um, and that's the diameter of the can, two and a half inch. And gosh, I think they're, I want to say they're eight inch, eight inch travel. Um, it's got two inches in the back, same travel. Um, I've got, these are two and a half inch triple bypass shocks in the front I bought these on offer up so they're they're really kind of ugly and 
gross, but they actually have some good good valving in them. They didn't they didn't require much uh, adjustment when I went out, so they actually work pretty good. Um, it still maintains its rear steer, so these trucks came with rear steering, and I and I mean rear steering because the tie rod and drag links are actually behind the front suspension as opposed to the modern trucks where the where it's actually in front of the front suspension so that's hugely debatable with the off-road guys um, again I wanted to keep this truck period or period correct to an extent um, I really wanted to do multiple shocks on this truck but uh, Darren at Autofab he talked me out of it he just told me it'd be a nightmare to tune it'd be a ton of work and I'd still be you know running model tube shocks and yeah it's cool old school stuff but it just it wouldn't work nearly as good so um, so I went with the more modern air bump and um, bypass shock so and of course the radius arms a lot of guys they will cut these guys and extend them um, but these are fully fully you know fabricated and brand new parts huge hot um, huge heim joints um, all the steering is heimed um, all the brake lines are stainless steel I actually made these by from scratch um, they're not they're not perfect but they they hold brake fluid <laughs> and then uh, you can see the gusset here on the steering right here for that it's actually double shear so that that's what that means it's got a connecting point here and another one on this top here um, obviously for strength and, and uh, bulletproofness if you will um, this kit actually had an option for the uh, swing set steering which I obviously took um, you can actually run stock steering on this kit but it, it limits the travel to 16 inches which yeah it's not a big deal three inches but um, I just wanted to do it right so I did it and here's what it is Here you can see my uh, steering box is leaking a little bit from my headers um, again these things need constant attention you get the uh, cross member for to, to sturdy up the flex I maintain the stock cross member here it's got some plated uh, reinforcements there um, I did end up I before I got built these headers I actually had a set of uh, mad dog headers on this truck and it was the only company believe it or not that that made headers for a 460 truck and, a, and an F100 so um, and they didn't work because Mad Dog doesn't make uh, headers for uh, this type of suspension they basically made up for four-wheel drive trucks and they don't they obviously don't make as much suspension travel as, as this truck does so um, yeah so anyway I, I have to brace these guys back up because I did trim them back a little bit for those other headers in fact, the other side is much worse. Um, the uh, transmission's got 24 quarts of oil, so it's got an extra deep pan. Super expensive to change this oil. Um, truck's got dual transmission coolers on it. You can see where it tees off right there. Um, it's got one in the bed, which I'll show you in a second, and then one at the in the bottom half of the radiator. Um, I had to have fender wall headers. So when I built the headers, I was I was all about fender wells. I love the way they look, and it's also easier to swap transmission out without having to pull the exhaust off. Um, let's see here. Let's see my heat shield there to keep the cabin cooler. I did uh, I did uh, sound or I did the uh, sound deadening liner on inside the cab so it, this truck still got hot inside with this engine because it, it got moved back with the uh, autofab engine mounts so that was uh it was just like driving a, a heater around so i had to put the uh, vintage air system in there so let's see so the truck's all steel this is all factory sheet metal and i actually stripped the entire truck down to bare metal um, if you want to check out my uh, the build, I posted a lot of it on YouTube, or not YouTube, but uh, Instagram. And um, 
My uh, Instagram handle is McDaniel Motorsports. If you want to check out the build, posted a lot of stuff on there. Let's see here. So my train I have a trans cooler right here. It's a little Doral. It's actually a dual um, a dual cooler. So I guess you could call it a dual pass. Um, so those lines obviously run out to here. Again, AN lines. Um, the bed I actually widened the bed nine inches so it's it's hard to tell but if you stand back here you can see the uh, step side fenders actually protrude out past the cab and the reason I did that is because of wheel travel I wanted the wheels to actually travel up and I was faced with the with the decision of putting wider so autofab makes fiberglass fenders that are wider and so they actually keep you from having to widen the bed but I wanted to run the same uh, width axle in the rear as the front end so it tracks correctly. Um, so I ended up making these kickouts here because uh, when the tires traveled up, they would, they would actually hit the end of the bed. So, um, so the only piece of sheet metal that's not factory is that front um, bed panel. So I had to buy two others. And so I made one out of the stock one. And then of course I made this guy out of some aftermarket sheet metal as well. I think I got it from AMD. Um, I can't remember, it's been five years. Um, this is a fuel safe brand Enduro fuel cell. It's a 40 gallon unit. Uh, it's a monster. It hangs down quite a bit. I, I really wanted to, to hide it better, but um, there's just really no hiding it. <laughs> I need to build a skid plate for it, obviously. Um, the Rear end was a custom rear end from Sandy Cone. Um, Sandy Cone is actually an OG in the off-road world. Some of you may not have ever heard of him, but I suggest you check out his products because he makes, in my opinion, the best of the best, and he does it all himself. So uh, he's a legend in my eyes. So I was honored when I called him and you know, to talk to him about building this rear end. He answered the phone, which is a rarity these days. Try, try calling anyone famous, and you're just not, you're just not gonna get anybody on the phone. So Sandy actually, I can, I'm lucky enough to consider him a friend. Um, but he built this thing from scratch, and it's a, uh, it's a 10 inch ring gear, 456 ratio. It's got a strange nodular uh, third member. Obviously, you can see the skid plate there. Sandy made me. Uh, it's got a spool in it. Uh, against my better judgment, it's a full floating axle, or full floating rear axle. They're 40 spline, uh, monster 300M axles. And for those of you who don't know what a full floating axle is, is this hub is like a front hub on a, on a vehicle to where it has an inner and an outer bearing and it has a seal, just like the front hubs. And the beauty of these things is you don't have to remove the hub to pull the axle. There's a threaded hole at, at behind this plate right here. You, put a, you put, have your bolt in there, and you thread it in, and you can actually pull it out. Um, so that's, it's a quick change kind of deal, but it's not quite quick change. It's just so you can pull the axles and inspect them. Um, obviously way stronger than a semi-floating axle as well. I've got 5 8 studs from SecureX and I've got four piston wheelwood brakes front and rear on 11 inch rotors. Um, I was limited to the size of the, the rotors because of the wheels. I wanted to run a 15 inch wheel and you know why wouldn't I? This is a this is a you know older build. Not older by age but older by by the you know the genre I was after with this truck. So um, I'm pretty limited, but these brakes have a lot of pucker power. Um, I actually went the wrong way on the master cylinder at the beginning. I went with like an inch and 1.15 bore um, piston, and I, I thought that that would make the brakes more, um, give me more pedal, but it actually gave me less pedal. So it was a little sketchy, so I actually went back to, uh, I think it's 7 8 piston, and it, man, it stops great now. So. I don't have a booster in this truck because the the cam just doesn't create enough vacuum to actually operate a booster. 
So, um, anyway, sorry if I'm all over the place. This truck just, it's, uh, there's a lot to tell you, in other words. So, got uh, billet yokes on the uh, third member here, and a billet output shaft. Um, the, I don't like the fact that it's got a slip yoke on it, but I really didn't have a choice with that, that transmission. The, uh, the idea is to eventually put, have a 6XD in this thing, which is a, it's a clutched manual transmission, but you only have to use the clutch to start and stop. So, um, and then you just bang the gears. It's kind of like a, um, uh, what's the old NASCAR? Jericho. It's like an old Jericho transmission, but it's new and they're, uh, quite simple inside so that's my 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 goal is to put a 6xd in this thing eventually but you can see the uh the bottom trusses for that spine uh cross member up there and um, these are autofab spec uh leaf springs and they are truly amazing it actually cycles 19 inches in the rear um and i have cycled it and let's see here see my fill cap on the rear end drive shaft pro maybe this trip this drive shaft it's um, it's got 3150 u joints sealed no grease fittings and oh oh sorry I just got distracted uh, you can see my uh, drive shaft catch here um, my bed structure is kind of thrown together uh, a little bit more on that in a bit. Um, the uh, two link here actually controls pinion rise under under load. The rear end, Sandy talked me into these uh, U boltless design, which is pretty darn incredible. I don't know why manufacturers haven't gone to this because U bolts are stupid and they freeze up and do all kinds of weird stuff over time. And man, that's a cool thing. I, it, it's really truly a great invention so I'm not sure if Sandy invented it but he sure as hell talked me into it and I'm, I'm happy he did he also talked me into the spool in this thing and I hate spools spools suck around town um, it's best in the dirt it allows you to steer with the throttle in the dirt but if I'm being honest I drive this truck more on the street than I do in the dirt um, its intended purpose was to be a pre-runner but uh, in all reality, I drive it every chance I get. So it's, uh, it's kind of annoying and it chews up tires. And let's face it, tires are not cheap. These, are, these were 500 bucks a piece before COVID. I'm sure they're probably in the sevens now. So it's, it's just ridiculous. So I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to change that to a locker at some point. I went with this is my third set of exhaust uh, mufflers. And these are four chamber. These are they, what they call big block mufflers. Uh, it's the quietest muffler I could find. And uh, I actually screwed up and didn't, I should have placed these things further forward because you need a, a minimum of eight inch tip on these things. I mean, you lose a little bit of power. My, my dyno guy gave me a bunch of, a bunch of crap for that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you live and you learn, so. I mounted both batteries under here. Um, they're, they're both always feeding the system. I just didn't want to have any issues. Uh, these batteries are pretty darn good. They're the yellow top Optimas. I uh, found these pretty cool brackets on uh, Summit. Um, as you can see, the front shackle hanger is also the, the landing point for the front of the rear tube or uh, hoops, shock hoops. And you can see how they I integrated this two-link design into the back of the uh, shackle mount here too. Um, oh, back to the batteries. I've got four aught battery cables running front to rear on this truck. I didn't want to have any issues with starting, so that's what I did. And uh, man, copper is expensive. But uh, let's see here. What else? Uh, so you could see that spine I was talking about that actually houses the uh, air bumps in the rear. Um, I, I just threw this this aluminum uh, sheet in here because I had I built that structure. It has to come apart. 
in order to take the bed off the truck. So I wanted it to all be modular. So it, it, yes, it took forever to build, um, but it's all it all unbolts, and so I can actually lift this thing off the truck without having to remove the uh, the shock hoops. I've got dual bypasses in the rear, and obviously uh, two inch. I again, I believe they're eight inch travel hydro bumps. Uh, this is my fuel tank vent. It's actually too short and uh, it's it's got a rollover valve on it so it's really not a big deal but um, I need to um, fix that because it's it really should be a lot longer. Um, the bed is kind of a blank canvas right now. I have a spare tire um, and I want to build a, a frame or tubular frame that goes over this the fuel cell here and I want to put the spare tire at this angle and then of course um, I'm gonna design a little box here right in here so I can actually put a you know like a refrigerator cooler in there and you know, a couple dump cans and a jack and you know all the necessities toolbox and whatnot so getting to it is a whole nother thing um, I actually build cars for a living and as you guys probably know that's what I've been working on um, let's see here. Uh, truck was really, really straight and clean. For the most part, rust free. I did have some floor pan patches to do. Uh, these are Corbo low backs. They're suspension seats. They even have a little um, a lumbar uh, pump up here. It's kind of like a, a uh, not a stethoscope, but like a blood pressure cuff pump and you can just release them actually pretty cool still need to mount my fire extinguisher it's got a sidewinder shifter obviously uh, MSD ignition here's my dead man switch here that guy here's my quick four controller that controls the transmission here's my uh, vintage air my sniper uh, ECU uh, what are you doing Sorry, my wife had to interrupt. So, before I dump the kill on that, myself on that, I uh, built this dash. I wanted it to kind of remain stock-ish. Um, classic dash actually makes these inserts. You can paint them, they're actually pretty cool, but I actually ordered one that was a blank and it didn't have any holes in it because I wanted to put bigger gauges. They only do the uh, two and a 16th size holes so I, they actually made me a blank without the holes in it and so I could fit all these gauges in there. Um, as you can see my dual pump switches here, ignition coil, uh, trans cooler fan, and uh, uh, radiator overrides, overdrive off, you know, all the usual stuff. It's got a tilt column in it because I'm big and I uh, can't fit in standard cab trucks very well. Um, not a lot of room in this truck for me. I am jammed up back here and uh, I tried a high back for safety and I was even more uncomfortable than I am here. Um, I have some concerns about my head hitting in this. So um, I've yet to figure out a solution for that. Here's my crappy Chinese uh, headliner. It's supposed to be stock-ish or OEM-ish. All this stuff's OEM original or um, painted and redone. I like the dash without the pad. I'm not sure. This was a base model truck, so it, it, I don't believe it had a pad on it to begin with. So I Sorry, my camera overheated. That's kind of weird. I don't know why it does that. But um, anyway, back to it. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, it's got an American Auto Wire. Don't mind that mess it all works really well i promise um i just have a phobia of cutting the wires too short that's uh yeah anyway um it's got a mechanical speedometer which this turns it into a digital signal um and that is an expensive unit i remember um i can't remember what brand it is but uh let me fire this thing up for you guys so you can hear it
Instagram, this dude was an absolute craftsman and a and I can now call him a friend as well. He's actually a really good guy. Uh, yeah, I have a really cool story to tell you about Scott here in a second. But here she is running. You see the crank newspapers coming out of that. So, before I go and end this video, Scott with Detroit Vintage Wheels. So, I had brought six tires, or I'm sorry, no, four tires over to this local tire shop with these wheels. And they were, uh, the tires weren't on the wheels, obviously. So, I went over there to have these, these wheels or tires mounted on these wheels. And I specifically told them, I go, please, please, please do not hurt these wheels and I don't know if they just it was like an FU and but anyway I get a call about an hour and a half after I dropped him off and it's the it's the manager and he tells me that when they were mounting the wheels or tires rather upon when they were airing them up and beating the tire on the wheel he tells me the tire or the wheel exploded and I'm like what that tire that wheel is 50 years old they're, they're perfect I, I think even Scott even magnifluxes these things to, to check for cracks and I'm like all right I'll come get it you know he's like I, we can't do any more because it's a, it's a safety hazard I'm like okay whatever man I'll take it somewhere else so I go and pick him up and <laughs> this guy they got one mounted they didn't even beat it up and what he did was the guy working the tire machine he clamped down on the tire or, or i'm sorry the wheel and broke the inner lip off the wheel i was so devastated i i, I was just beside myself and these these a-holes had the audacity to tell me that the wheel failed and i'm thinking there is no way that that wheel failed at 40 psi airing these things up I was just beside myself and I so I ended up kind of realizing what I was dealing with so I just left you just note self don't go to any tire tire door to have the stuff on. I, I knew better and having worked in the industry I I should have known better but I, I really like to keep local businesses in, in in business and pay these guys but rather than pay a big chain and whatnot so I ended up calling Scott, I'm like, hey man, these idiots broke my wheel and then they lied about it and I was just beside myself because I paid a lot of money for these things. I mean, it was fair, but it was, it was a good, good chunk of change. So Scott's like, okay, I'll tell you what, I've got two more of two more wheels of that set. I will send them to you. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I'll just send them to you. They're yours if you want them. I didn't even, I don't even think I paid shipping. But he sends me two more wheels free of charge. Now I'm not saying he's gonna do that for you, but what a stand-up guy. And ever since then we've been good friends. In fact, I even told him, I'm like, dude, I don't know where to take these things. There are no good tire stores anymore. They're all just chains and just a bunch of tire plug installers, you know? And so he not only did he send me two new wheels, so I have a set of, of six now, he called tire stores for me. This guy is not a big company. He's, he's just one guy that recreate or, or that refurbishes these wheels of all different kinds. He's, he's a, you know, and, and with the utmost respect, he is a wheel dork. And I love that about Scott. He knows more stuff about wheels than 
I, I can even imagine. So, but what a great guy. And the fact that he did that, not even knowing who I really was, aside from a guy buying wheels from him, that was really cool. And uh, he was all the way up in Detroit, Michigan. And he's calling around for tire, tire stores for me. I mean, it, it was just a really cool story, so I wanted to share that with you. But, um, but anyway, check him out. His name's Scott. He, he, he used to run Detroit Vintage Wheels. I believe he's retired from the wheel business, but he's still on Instagram, and he's buying up vintage cars and living his best life. So, um, yeah, so I, what, a, what a cool story, huh? But um, anyway... Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm not going to tell you to like, subscribe, share. If you guys want to do that, go ahead. Uh, but uh, so cliche. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions about the truck, drop them down in the comments. Other than that, I appreciate you guys watching. And um, we're uh, trying to pump out... Uh, content as much as fast as we can over here I just don't want to put out just anything a lot of people just put out crap and that's not what we do here so um, you guys have a good one and uh, thanks for tuning in take care